If you've tried out the new version of Outlook, you may have found yourself asking, well, why can't I work offline? Or trying to wonder why the file attachments don't work like they used to in the classic version of Outlook. And if you did, well, you're not alone. But in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the most common questions that you've sent me on a new version of Microsoft Outlook. We're gonna look at 11 tips to help make the new Outlook a little less frustrating and maybe just a little bit more useful. So whether you're already using a new version of Outlook or you're still deciding if it's right for you, this tutorial will help you work smarter with a new version of Outlook and maybe even unlock a few new tricks that you didn't know were possible before inside of Outlook. So let's get into it. So you join me inside a new version of Outlook. And before we get started with answering some of your questions, I know you may be wondering, what version of Outlook are we running today? We're using Outlook for Windows and signed in with a Microsoft 365 business account. We're also running a targeted release, meaning that we're getting the latest updates from Microsoft directly. It's often that you may be running a different release that comes a little later, but that's not a problem because of course we're using new features that you will also have access to very soon, or maybe even today. So now we've cleared up what version of Outlook we're running in today's demonstration, let's get started by answering some of your key questions. The first question is all around scheduled send. So in Outlook, we can send our messages later rather than immediately clicking the send button. To find that option in the new Outlook, as you'll see here, I've drafted an email and next to the send button, we can click into the drop down and then select schedule send. When we select this option here, we can now define when the email is sent, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. or Sunday morning, but neither of these options will suit my needs. So let's select custom time, and now we can select from a time and date and when this email is sent. I'm gonna go ahead and select today, but I'm gonna move the time forward to 4 p.m. and so my team members come online. Selecting send, but of course it will be sent later on. We can check that out by going to our drafts folder and we'll see the schedule email is now also shown here. To cancel it, we could also select cancel send and again we can make changes to the scheduling of when this message is sent or now send it immediately. That's a quick way inside of the new Outlook, you can now schedule your messages to be sent at a later time and date. And another question is around the ability to save an email as a .msg file. It might be you need to upload it to other systems and previously in the new Outlook, it forced you to use a .email message. Inside of the new Outlook, it's now supported to save your emails as MSG files. Here's an email here that we can export to my local computer. By selecting the freed up menu in the right hand side and select save as, you'll see a new option to save as MSG. By left clicking, you'll now see it opens the Explorer window and we can save this email to my local computer or any of our, of our shared folders that could even include a shared network drive. So that's a quick way that we can now save an email to a, one of your folders as a .msg file. And another key question that also has been raised is how we can also save attachments from an email to your local computer and not be forced into OneDrive for Business. Well, here's an attachment document and one of my emails received from my colleague. By clicking in the drop down on the file itself, you'll now see an option to click Save As. We can now save this document locally, once again to one of your local folders or a shared drive. I'll go ahead and save it into my Documents folder as a marketing brief. And as we can see here, the marketing brief file has now been stored in my own Documents folder. So you can now save a document or a file from your Outlook into one of your own folders. But there's also been questions around attachments and emails that goes beyond saving it to your computer. Could we copy a file on an email and paste it into another? Once again, under that drop down menu, we can now select copy. By opening a new email inside of Outlook, all we now simply do is paste. And the document here has now been added as an attachment and is again not stored in OneDrive for Business. And these are a way we can also drag and drop an attachment to your computer without clicking save as. Absolutely, we can now do that in New Outlook. By left click and dragging your attachment and putting it into a folder or your desktop, you can now see the file itself is copied to your local computer. So yes, you can now drag and drop files from Outlook to your local computer 
without using the Save As button too. But how can you also create a new Out of Office auto reply? Well inside a new Outlook we're going to do that now through the settings icon in the top right. Under your accounts here you'll see an automatic replies area. You can now turn on automatic replies and also set the start and end time. As well as that there's other additional options. You can block out your calendar for the period if you're on a period of leave or you're out of the office. You can also mark the title for the event. If any invites come from your colleagues or third parties, once again, you can go and automatically decline those. And again, decline and cancel any meetings during the period. It even shows you the events to clear and you can send your automatic reply message or create a separate message to let them know about why you can't join the meeting. You can also do the same for automatic replies in your, inside your organization too to ensure you can have a different message for both internal and external parties. So there you go, you can now easily set an automatic reply but even have additional options to help tidy up your calendar before you go on your period of leave or vacation. If you're finding this tutorial helpful then you'll definitely want to check out our free Microsoft 365 ebook collection. We've answered the most common Microsoft 365 questions just like we're doing here with the new version of Outlook and we've turned them into easy to read guides to help you work smarter every single day. They're even free to download, packed with practical tips and ready for you right now. Just head to the link shown below to get hold of them. So let's now jump back into the new version of Outlook. And some of you have asked, how can you disable Microsoft Copilot inside of Outlook? Maybe you don't want to use the free Copilot for work inside of Outlook, or you may have the enterprise version of Copilot, but you don't want to interact with it to draft your emails and summarize them more. Whilst I think it's a great capability in Outlook, I do respect that some of you do want the option to turn this off. And now inside a new Outlook, we can do exactly that for both experiences, whether that's the free version for business or the paid version for business. Head over to the settings icon in the top right and head down to the Copilot option. And here we can now turn off Copilot. By checking that slider and selecting save, Copilot is now disabled. We no longer see it in the left hand rail inside of Outlook. Also, we have no options using the enterprise version of Microsoft Copilot to use it to draft your emails, summarize and more. But if you now want to turn it back on, head back into the settings, once again head to Copilot and simply turn it back on and save the change and Copilot will now be re-enabled for you. But you're now in full control of when Copilot is enabled inside the new version of Outlook. And is there another way that you can also open web links from inside of the new Outlook without being forced to open Microsoft Edge? I know some of you do prefer browsers like Google Chrome or other browsers too. There's a link here you can see in an email. By left clicking it, it takes us straight into Microsoft Edge. But instead, if you use Google Chrome, you can also make that change to use your preferred browser. Now head back into your settings inside a new Outlook and then head down to your general settings. Select links and here you can choose from your default browser instead of using Microsoft Edge. Select save and now whenever you follow a link inside of the new Outlook, now use your default browser rather than Microsoft Edge. And there were many questions around shared mailboxes in the new Outlook and the way it brought them together in a single shared folder. And like many of you, I wasn't a fan of that new experience. But here inside a new Outlook, a new change has been made. If you're now a member of any shared mailboxes, you'll now see them at the bottom of your Outlook, just like we did in the classic version. We can expand product support and see all the folders inside of this shared mailbox. The same goes for general queries, which is another shared mailbox I have access to. Selecting inbox, you will then be able to open the emails just as you did before in the classic version of Microsoft Outlook. But also there's some further enhancements to how these now work. Previously, you couldn't even favorite any folders in a shared mailbox, meaning you didn't have quick access to them at the top of your new Outlook, but now you absolutely can. Let's now add the inbox to our favorites for general queries. And at the top of new Outlook, you'll now see inbox and also showing the mailbox it relates to, which we can open right at the top of your favorites. That's a quick way to now get back to any of your often used folders in a way that's easy to understand. And if you want to check the permissions that you have to a shared mailbox, you also won't need to contact your IT team. 
Instead, head to the settings icon in New Outlook and then head under Accounts and Shared with Me. And here are the shared accounts I have access to. By expanding them, we can see they were automatically added by our IT admin. Because I was granted access to general queries and product support, they both automatically appear inside the new Outlook. And I can see that I can send email and read and manage all folders for both of these accounts. If you wanted to add other shared folders, select Add. You can now type in the mailbox you'd like to access, whether that's an individual person or a shared mailbox. And it will go ahead and add those folders into the new Outlook for you too. We had another question on collapsing your folder list on the left hand side of your new Outlook. And there isn't an easy way to do that today, but there is a method this may well help you. So in this example, we can see that all the mailbox folders appearing on the left hand side. It's quite a busy view of the new Outlook. But however, I only use certain folders in my inbox. As we know, many times we can have hundreds of subfolders which are never used. So in this example, we can select team meetings and add it as a favorite. Now we can collapse the whole mailbox down, ensuring that I can now see the inbox folders as well as the team meetings and other favorite folders, including folders that we've created from labels and categorization inside of the new Outlook. So that's one way of dealing with this scenario. Collapse the mailbox, add the folders used often as favorites, and then use your favorites area as a way to access those folders very quickly and get rid of that busy left-hand side rail inside of Outlook. And how also can we see who's responded to a meeting invite really easily in a new version of Outlook? Well, what we can see here is I've received the response from one of my meetings I've organized. We can now see a new pane in the new version of Outlook and it shows who hasn't responded and who has accepted. And you can see that on any replies you get from your invites as a very quick way of seeing them through this dialogue. But if you don't have quick access to the email, we can also go ahead and open the calendar on the left hand side. Now if we go ahead and open the meeting invite itself, we can select the tracking button at the top of your invitation. On the right hand side, it shows who's accepted or didn't respond to the meeting. Now ensuring you can understand who's attending your meeting either via the meeting response itself or by opening it inside of your new Outlook calendar. And we know that the new Outlook was always a problem when it comes to offline working, but now the new Outlook does work offline. There are also some settings you should consider before you go offline to ensure that you're gonna work with the right content when you need to. To do that, head into the settings icon in the top right of your new Outlook, and then head over to general. Select the offline tab, and here now are the options that we can use for your offline working. First off, we have enabled offline email, calendar, and people access. And we can choose which folders to save offline. Default and favorites is set automatically, but you may also want to set for default favorites and recently used. Yes, inbox, sent, drafts, archive, deleted, and snoozed will apply, as well as recently used folders too. The days of the email to save have also been updated. It was previously set to seven, but now the default is 30. And there are other parameters you can set to ensure you can access more information inside of your Outlook. And of course, any file attachments, which will be handy if you're on a flight or a train and you have no internet connection. Selecting save, those new settings will now apply and a new version of Outlook will still continue to work when you don't have an internet connection. So check out those settings in a new version of Outlook to ensure that you're allowed to work offline when you need to. So let's wrap up. Today we've looked at some of the most common questions around a new Outlook, from how to work offline to managing file attachments more smoothly and even improvements in shared mailboxes. And hopefully you've come away now with a few insights to help you navigate the new Outlook with more confidence and a little less frustration. Now, if there's one feature that I still think is missing, and I know many of you feel the same, it's the spell check behavior. Right now, we're stuck using left click to access the spelling suggestions, when over a decade, we used to click in right click. So for many of us, it's the opposite of what we've been used to, and the comments have reflected that. So for me, this could be one simple toggle inside a new Outlook to choose left or right click to then provide your spelling suggestions. And that would make it a little easier for us all. And yes, while offline functionality has now arrived in New Outlook, it's still missing a few key capabilities. 
But that being said, it's pretty clear the Outlook team is making progress and we're starting to see more of those must have features making their way back in finally. Now, if you've got a question about the new Outlook, why not drop it in the comments? I'd love to consider it for a future tutorial, but just a quick reminder though, we're an independent company. We're certainly not Microsoft. We don't get to choose what features show up in a new Outlook or how they even work. What we can do though, is help you get the most out of what's there today and advocate for better ways to work right alongside you. And if these tutorials helped you out, why not go ahead and give it a like. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you also don't miss out on more ways to make the most of Microsoft 365, not only the new version of Outlook. And other than that, well, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.